Hey there Robloxians, uh, today we're going to be starting a tutorial series, we're going to be releasing these uh, in the coming weeks, um, we have a few lined up and have quite a few more to go. This tutorial will be going over the very basics of Studio, so this will be review for a lot of you, but uh, if you've been looking to get started building in Roblox, uh, building cool games and places, this is a great place to start. So first thing we need to do is open Roblox Studio. Either you'll have a link on your desktop, or you can go to Start and type in the word Roblox, and it should be one of the results that come up. It'll take a moment to open, and we'll be greeted with a bunch of buttons and a website. For now, we're going to go to File and New, which will open up a base plate uh, and an empty place. By clicking on the 3D view, we can control it just like any other Roblox game, with WASD, the arrow keys, and by right clicking to move the camera. By default, to the right you'll have the Explorer. It lists everything that's in the game. Most of these will remain a mystery for now, but to see more details about this stuff, Go to View, Properties. This new window will display everything about what you have selected. Size, color, position. You can mess with any of these or check out the wiki for more information. For now, we're going to change the color and the material. And now, to see what it looks like in-game, we'll go to Tools, Test, play solo, and wait for a second, and then we'll be in game. It's not much, but it's something that you made. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, we'll go back to our editor and select View, Basic Objects. A new panel should open up to the left. In this new panel, you can see everything that could be inserted into what you have selected in the Explorer. We'll select Workspace, which represents all 3D objects, and we'll double-click Part. A new part should be visible in front of the camera. We can copy and paste this part to make a few more objects to work with. Now that we have our parts, we need a few ways to move it. Here's our transformation panel. By default, the dragger is selected. It lets us drag parts around the screen by clicking and holding. We also have the translate tool, which lets us move the parts in three directions, X, Y, and Z. We also have the Scale tool, which lets us change the size of parts. And Rotate, which lets us rotate them. Again, to test this, we go to Tools, Test, play solo, then wait a moment, and we should be in game. You may notice that the larger block has fallen. This is because everything in Roblox is physically simulated, which means if you want a part to float, you have to make one little change in the properties. Now we'll go back to our editor and select our large part and scroll down the properties until we see Anchored. If Anchored is checked, that part will not react to any forces or gravity. It will not move unless you explicitly move it. While we're here, we'll also make a few copies and test the Can Collide property. Right below Anchored, if Can Collide is checked, that means that it will collide with other objects. If it's not checked, that means that you can walk through it and other parts can pass through this part as if it wasn't even there. 
Essentially, only its visual representation is in the game. So we go back to Tools, Test, Play Solo, and we can jump back in the game and see that one of these parts is floating in air, and one of the other parts we can walk through. Often in building, precision is very important. So we're going to look at one more tool, uh, the magnet tools, which let you lock the part's movement into a grid. So if you select the one uh, magnet here, you will lock the motion of these parts into one stud increments. So we'll move one stud at a time back and forth or drag on a one stud grid. If we select half a stud, then it will move at half a stud grid. And then if we select uh, the X, it will move freely uh, with no grid. This also works for rotation and all the other tools. The last button we'll look at today is the collision check button. When this button is checked, it will keep parts from intersecting each other, so you can't have them overlapping in the editor. If you uncheck this button, you can have parts intersect each other in the editor and anchor them so they don't move. This is really useful for building complex things like signposts or buildings, anything where you need odd shapes. You, you can use parts intersecting to get that effect. And that's it. That's all you really know to start making a really cool place in Roblox. And uh, you can message me, Fustro Blocks, if you have any questions or any topics for us to make tutorials about. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and you can make some cool stuff. Thanks for watching.